Welcome to the hottest debate show on TV. It is the big issue. My name is Femi Akonde. Now hear this. Religion is a very sensitive subject, especially in Nigeria. Now in this country, you are advised to thread carefully when discussing or even debating religious issues to avoid offending people's sensibility. People get really emotional when you talk about um, religion or you dare question some religious principles and doctrines. You may even face the risk of being misinterpreted. Religion is interwoven with our lifestyles in Nigeria and it influences critical decisions in politics, economy, and even sports. People have pleaded with God to take Nigeria out of recession, to even choose a spouse for them or even their leaders. And in some cases, people even plead with God to provide jobs for them and so much more. No wonder Karl Marx says religion is the opium of the masses. Today, there is a widespread belief that religion is a solution to life's problems. So on the big issue today, we ask, is religion truly a solution to society's problem? Well, we'll show you both sides of the coin when we return from this break to get the debate started. You're still watching The Big Issue. <laughs> Welcome back. Is religion truly a solution to society's problem. Well, to, this, to debate this today, I have Ifa Maberu. Come on stage, Mr. Ifa Maberu. A round of applause for you. Welcome. Welcome, Mr. Ifa Maberu. Take the podium over there. Mr. Ifa Maberu is a historian, an activist, and also the national coordinator of Pan-African Consciousness Renaissance. Well, this man is named after the gods, they say. <laughs> And he believes religion is not a solution to man's problem. Good to have you here, Mr. Ifa Maberu. What does your name stand for? Uh, well, it means that um, that shall not be afraid. So okay. in other words, uh, you know, it's in line with uh, one of the statements in the Bible, mm -hmm. that that shall not be afraid. Thou shall not fear. Welcome, Mr. Ifa Maberu. <laughs> well, on the other side is Fola Daniel Adelesi. Welcome, Mr. Fola Daniel. Come up, please. <laughs> Mr. Fola Daniel Adelesi, a public speaker. Welcome. Check the other side of the podium. Mr. Fola Daniel Adelesi is a public speaker and trainer. He is a management consultant and a radio host. What's the name of your show? I used to do You Can on Radio Continental. Okay. Welcome, Mr. Fola Daniel. Well, Mr. Fola Daniels believes religi religion is what man should seek when in trouble. Are you serious? Absolutely. So why do you feel religion would solve man's problems? It has been solving it. It's not just a feeling. It is something that we've experienced over the years. So it has to continue to solve the problems. For example, we had issues... If you live in a country like America, you probably don't need faith in a religion to be well. But if you live in a country like Nigeria, where people are stealing your money, the money that should be for your health care, and you get into trouble, you need faith and religion to get yourself out of that hospital. Do you hear him? Yes, I do. So how do you react to what he just said? Well, I think the irony of what he just said is that um, the, masses of this, I mean, the masses of our people living in this country have been religious for the past, um, how many years now? For the past several decades now. Um, right on this continent, Nigerians remains the most religious set of human beings walking the planet Earth. But um, religion has not put food on our table. Re religion has not really translated to anything that has to do with our growth or development. So I see a major contradiction in what he had just said. Mm. Because we are the most religious but the most backward. Mm. Is that... Um, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there, there, that, that's, that's not, uh, I mean, that is not to say anything. There's no, that, that in itself is not accidental. That's not a major contradiction. But what it means is that religion as an organized system has done overstayed its welcome. And it's high time we as a people rise up and, you know, wrap religion and throw it into the trash can of history. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Fola Daniels. 
in your opening remarks, you said um, in a country like Nigeria, mm -hmm. where we have politicians stealing our money, we need religion. Now, why hasn't religion been able to stop politicians from stealing our money? Before we come down, let me remind Mr. Ifama Beru that he speaks eloquently in a contradictory manner to his personal beliefs and the things that he has said. His name is Ifama Beru. Ifa itself is a tool for religion. People consult it when they're in trouble. So it means that they expect it will solve their problems. The other issue is when you say religion has not put food on the people's table, let me remind you, there are about four major churches in this country who hold programs on a monthly basis. And when they hold their programs, there are at least a billion people in some of those programs. And in one week alone, each of those churches spends not less than a billion naira. They locked feeding, down the legacy by the expressway. Feeding way. several people who may not necessarily be members of their churches. People have to buy fuel to get to these places. The person who is selling the fuel may not be a religious person, but they are contributing to the GDP of this country. People have to board buses. The transporter is not a part of that organization, but he is able to feed his family because he has people to carry to those places. <laughs> people are providing electricity. People are providing electricity in those places. Some, some of the sound systems that are being used in those places that are worth millions of dollars are imported from America. And what's more, the reason he can even speak English in the first place is because religion brought education into Nigeria. Um, well, well I, 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 it's, not, it's not my role now to agree or disagree with him. Yeah, that's it's correct. for you yeah. to counter well, his I, argument. I just need to correct um, an impression. Um, Ifa is not a religion and I think we have got to educate ourselves about what we had before the arrival of Christianity and what we had before the arri arrival of Islam. Ifa as a matter of fact is a spirituality and if you understand theology very well you will understand that we have spirituality before the arrival of religion and with everything that has to do with religion. You know I said earlier on that religion itself is an organized system because it is the making of Mankind. Can we separate of religion mankind. from spirituality? Oh, yes, you can. We had, we as a people, Africans, you know, we had spirituality before the arrival of religion, you know, just like I pointed out earlier on. Spirituality is about self-discovery. You know, when it comes to spirituality, you don't need a church. You don't need a mosque. You don't need a pastor. You don't need an imam to tell you which way to go. You know, spirituality has to do with self-discovery. You understand that there's a great throw, that there's a big man up in the sky and you need to relate with that man. Or you need to relate to that woman because for us, we don't have an idea as to what is above us. You know, it could be a man, it could be a woman, but we believe that there's, an, there's a spiritual being, you know, a above there. Being. It's a supernatural power. And you see, that's something that Christianity, Islam do not have because these religions, as a matter of fact, they are made chivalistic religions. You know, the entirety of things that has to do with these religions see themselves as made dominance. You know what I'm saying now? That is why when you assess everything that, that has to do with, and it's not just a question of Christian, Christianity and Islam, it's also the question of Judaism. We classify them as Arabic religions. These religions, as a matter of fact, because of their own ascendance, their rise, they see, they perceive the, the instinct that they needed to control the universe on the basis of their creed. They needed to control the universe on the basis of their beliefs. So in actual fact, we shouldn't even be talking about religion being a solution because look at the historical antecedents of the rise of most religions. They, they, they emanated from the idea that mankind has to, they, they have got to impose the, their own belief system on others. So as a matter of fact, we believe that religion is like a virus that has been on our planet for several years. I mean, for several decades and for several centuries. And as a matter of fact, when you look at everything that has to do with spirituality, spirituality was hijacked by the religious folks. And that's why we as a people, we are not speaking about religion within the context of, within the, you know, uh, uh, unconventional way. We are speaking about it in a more unconventional way because we think, like I said earlier on, it has, you know, overstayed its welcome. And it's that time we as the people understand this. And that is why when you look at Nigeria, for instance, this country, we have, Several churches, take for instance where I live, from my home place down to the bus stop, you could count about 10 churches. But the single person remains that right on my street, we have several poor people that are living on that street. And that had been the reality for several years. What that means is that religion, the churches, the monks, do not translate to their own personal upbringing. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, 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 there's this, there's this Buddhist um, philosophy that says, just as a candle cannot burn without fire, Men cannot live without a spiritual life. Does religion 
give us that spiritual life that also provides solutions to our problems. I'll take you back to where he started from, and I thank God because he's making my job extremely easier. Now, he has admitted that you need a form of spirituality. Let's leave semantics for the theologians. You have simply said that we need somebody up there. Forget it. That's an admittance of the fact that religion is Does the religion connect us with that person up there? No. Does it? I said, let's leave the semantics for the theologians. Whether you like it or not, you can't actually separate the religion from this, uh, the spirituality. Now, the spirituality is simply a depth of the religion. People can be religious but may not get into the level of spirituality. But religion is the first phase. And what, you can't be spiritual without a religion. You can't be. So he has said that, oh, there are several churches on the street and there are still several poor people. Let me remind you that it is a form of religion that has reduced many people to think that it is the responsibility of the church to take care of the poor people. What exactly is the role of the government? No, no, no. The last time I checked, it is absolutely the responsibility of the government to take care of the citizens of the streets. And don't forget, and don't forget, Apart from the fact that it is absolutely the responsibility of the government to take care of the people on the street, the church on your street pays a pastor. And when he pays a pastor, a pastor pays his family. A pastor has dependents. And if there are 10 churches, it means there are 10 pastors earning salaries. And those pastors don't buy from Christians only. They go back to the streets and buy from people. And Jesus Christ said, the poor will always be among you. So it's not the responsibility of the church, with no apology, the, the, the to point. absolutely take care of the responsibility of the politicians. We voted the politicians to eradicate poverty, to give us better life, to give us health care, to give us a system that works. Not the church, but the, not the pastor. It's not the pastor that is in office. But the point remains that, um, quite ironic, you know, the pastors we have today, we have jet owing pastors. We have university owing pastors. Again, we the question is, no, 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 how no, many no, pastors no, are in Nigeria so, and how many of them own private jets? We have, just, we have just, over a million hold on, pastors. Hold on, hold on. No, let's, let me trash it immediately. Want, we have on. over a million pastors in Nigeria and we don't have up to five pastors that have five private jets. Is it, no, no, is it just about but the they have limousines, they have the right leaders. He has said that there are private jet owning pastors. So the question is, how many pastors, what's the population, what's the percentage of pastors that own a private jet? compared to the number of pastors in Nigeria. Wait, why are people not talking about pastors that are giving a billion naira in scholarship to Nigerians? Why are we not talking about people who are... I mean, I mean... No, that's, that's not, that's not. The pastors today, let's the pastors, face, let's face beyond the, the jet, beyond I know, the I know the somebody, today, I know I somebody who has become a professor today, and the only reason he became a professor is because the pastor took over his education, sponsors him from the scratch, until the time he became a professor. We are not okay, talking okay, about okay, that. Okay, okay, hold on, hold if on. not for religion, he won't be sponsoring hold his education. On, on. I know it's really getting hot. The audience, of course, they're excited, and I am excited as well. But it's going to get to a segment that we call the Fire for Fire segment. At, in that segment, you can get at each other, but right now, I am the moderator here. Now, um, Oscar Wilde says, religion is like a blind man looking in a black room for a black cat that isn't there and finding it. You know, the point is... That is faith, yeah, belief. Exactly. And which is the most dangerous thing on planet Earth? You know, you giving people, creating an imaginary experience or creating, creating an imaginary event in the mind of the people. The problem with religion is that it creates false hopes, false promises. It gives the people that false image of what is not in reality. And that's why we call the pastors that many of our people, you know, hold in high regard. Let's, 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 hold on, let's not demonize the pastors. No, no, it's not no, only no, about I'm the not, pastors not, We're talking about it's religion it's as important. a whole. But we have um, the, yes, um, the Bodhis, you know um, the Christians, you know the Muslims. You know why it is important to point out all of these characters? Because you cannot speak about religion and not speak about those that control religion. It is important. You cannot separate it. Are you get what I'm saying now? Now, the point I was driving at earlier is that when you examine what seems to be happening you know, in our society today, you would see that you have many of these you know, elements who parish themselves as men of God and uh, women of God, but really, they do not understand the social realities and conditions of our people. And you see, our people come into their churches, come into the mosques, expecting they could you know, connect with them. But the irony is that they could not connect with them because at best, they are hope peddlers. You know what we mean, hope peddlers? The pastors, they peddle hopes. They sell hopes to the masses of our people. In the and recently, market. yes, recently, <laughs> about a month ago or thereabouts, a brother left church, 
and um, he ended up in the canal on, on a very good you know, Sunday uh, uh, afternoon. Why he did he, the church how did he find and his he way jumped, to the canal? Yeah, it's, it's, it's on the news. But the question is, what could have led, I mean, what in itself could have the pastor said, you know, that must have instigated that brother to have, you know, committed suicide. Oh, blaming the pastor but, for his death. No, I'm saying, I'm, or I'm, hardship in the society. I'm saying that he left church. So ordinarily leaving church, one would have expected that he would be of his best self and what have you. But he ended up in the canal. What that means is that for whatever it is, you can give several definitions to it. But the single fact remains that for what, wherever that pastor was, that man did not connect with the social realities and conditions of that young man. And that's why he ended up in the canal. So the question is, religion, really? We, many of us were speaking about it today because we had done seen that it's becoming useless, you know, so to say, because we cannot really relate with its existence. And let us really examine the etymology of religion itself, because to understand, the to understand any concept today, you have to go back to etymology. Look at religion. Religion came from the Latin word religera. What, what does it mean? To bind. To bind fast. To bind fast. It is only something that you do not need that you bind fast. It is something that you do not need like a slave that you bind fast. And also, let us re really examine what the concept seems to meet, meet today. Religion to us, we perceive it as an expression of material reality. And not just an expression of material reality, but also an expression of economic injustice. So we have religion today because we have not been able to answer the question of equitability in the distribution of wealth. And that is why when you look at the Western societies, for whatever problem I have with that society, the Western society has been able to move from what we are right now. You understand what I'm saying? Because they really do not see the importance of owing any regard to religion. Let me try to put this into perspective. Let's try, let's try to put this into perspective. Now, are you therefore saying that the failure of government and the society has forced people to take solace in religion. That's correct. And you see, we, are, we cannot speak about you know, religious activities holding its way today without not holding government responsible. Hold your but, thought there. But well, we'll take a break at this point, and when we return, we'll continue with the rest of the show. You're still watching The Big Issue. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the Fire for Fire segment. Well, gentlemen, in this segment, you're free to ask yourselves questions, puncture each other's argument. We say get at each other's throat, but of course, the gulf between both of you is wide enough, so um, we don't throw punches and also mind your language. Now it's the Fire for Fire segment. The ball is in your court. Fire. Okay, my first question would be to you, how does owning a private jet solve the problems of the Nigerian people? Because if they have a right under the constitution to buy whatever it is they want to buy, how does that solve the problem? Because if it is a crime to own a private jet, then it should be a crime for you to live in a house. There are several other people out there who don't own a home. Why don't you give up your home? Well, the question should be that how do they make the money which they use? You haven't that? answered no, the no, question. No, no, I've got to ask that question. No, how you answer make... the question no, how suddenly... owning a private jet no, solves the problem please, of the Nigerian people. If pastor... Because I'll tell you, if you don't know what to say, no, or if you don't know what to answer, no. I'll, 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 I'll tell no, you. I now, when you correct. own a private you jet, now when you own a correct. when you own a private pastor, jet, don't forget that pastor, you are actually imam, paying the government, meant. and the no. government is making a lot of money. That's and when the government makes money from that's what right. it charges you, you are able to feed the people on the streets. That's, that's incorrect. That's incorrect. How is it not correct? No, we are you, not, will we the have, government deny that the government is charging them? We are interested in how they made their fortune. That's very very important. How they how they make their money? How they make their money? How they make their money doesn't create a problem. Digressing here. I think we because are, it really. appears now the emphasis is on the pastors and how they make as their money. As they we're, forgetting, we're forgetting about the topic of religion. And let me tell you something. Thomas Paine says, of all tyrannies that affect mankind, the tyranny of religion is the worst. That's why I asked the simple like question. To to how that. does the private jet solve the Nigerian problems? No, it has nothing to do with the problem it in does. the society. It does. It does. Okay, you explain because, that to me. No, it gives us that instinct on how we question those at the realm of, I mean, those are the control of power. Those are the corridors of power. That in which we as a people, we haven't really grasped with, we haven't understood. And that is the ability to question those that tend to control our resources. And you see, it is important for us to put all of these things in the right perspective so that we can understand how they came to be in the first instance. 
And that is why we are critical about religion. We don't really have, and we are not saying people should burn the churches. We are not saying people should burn the monks. But you must have a critical mind. I haven't I seen mean, any. Not, I haven't I seen mean, any connection no, between what no, you're saying. No. You're talking about the people in power and then the people who are religious leaders. Exactly. How does it connect? It does. There's no connection between them the connection. because they are not even the people no, in does. power. Let's, 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 There's let's no connection. Connect it. Connect it. It does. <laughs> and the connection has to do with the fact that those in power must be questioned. The pastors, the imams, those in power must be questioned. Are pastors in power? They, they are in power they in our churches and in our mosques. The power, the power, the power now listen, we, we, we must define the, the difference between being a religious leader, which doesn't give you constitutional no, powers. Not, if you're talking you of power within the context of society, you'll be talking of constitutional power. No, a power, a pastor does not you have ask yourself, you ask yourself, power. So a ask pastor is not a power. No, ask yourself the question. He controls, excuse that? me, excuse me, he controls the church. He has authority, power and authority over the people in his congregation. We, we Again, that brings me back to you. Now, that brings power. me back to you trying to differentiate between how does religion solve the problem? Now, when you say control, I think it's a heavy word that you're using. It's not control. It's what? Now, what a pastor does is to convince nobody has been tied with a rope on your neck, dragged to a church on a Sunday. <laughs> if you want to go, you go. If I get on television and you like the way I talk and I say I run a church, you come. But they say if I wait, listen, they say, if, if I if you like the way I talk, even if I tell you I'm an imam and I run a mosque, you come. It's at your discretion. But they say, now they that, say, that they is say not religion, control. Religion has been used to hypnotize wait, humanity. That's, that's, that's so now is. um you choose that, you have that, you have that, choice. You have free will. The constitution bestows on you freedom of association. No body was hypnotized. It was no, your no, choice. No, no, no. That, that's not it correct. was your choice. That's Can you correct. prove that anybody was hypnotized? That's, that's Can correct. you take them to court that's and prove that this person was hypnotized? What is the proof? How that's was correct. it done? That's not correct. There has to be the, empirical evidence the, that anybody was hypnotized. The, the, the pastors, the pastors what? are the Okay, can you give us man? empirical evidence that anybody was no, hypnotized? Enough. When you sell hope to people, what does that mean? How does when that connect promise, to hypnotism? No, it does. It does. What when is the proof? The false hope. False, the false hope, you the false hope he is talking about, tell, is that what you would call faith? It's when, the, there's no such thing as false hope. It is. For when example, you, you listen, for, for example, for example, I know, man, I know somebody, I know somebody you, who walked into a church, did not man, have a job, and under two months he has gotten a job. Is that false hope? You tell him that he's going I know to be rich. somebody who was sick no. and we told him he's going to be That's well. The, the person has gotten the, uh, the person has become this. well. Is that false hope? You tell him that he's going to I know to be somebody rich. who didn't have a life. Somebody who wanted to commit suicide. And this is a life story. No. I can get you to call them and find out. Somebody who wanted to commit suicide. We are practically giving this person 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 no. on a weekly basis. I'm and as well encouraging the person that it will get better. No, I'm sorry. Eventually, I'm sorry. he has gotten a okay, job. So well. Is that false hope? <laughs> You tell him, man. If I, if I, my beru. Yeah, that's correct. You tell him, man, that he's going to be rich and he doesn't have a job. You tell him to pay some certain amount of money. What does that mean? That's false hope. Who you is say, asking them to pay a certain amount of money? No, no. If you are, if anybody, no, listen. You are assuming. No, you are assuming. You are saying, wait, 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 wait a minute. You are saying, so. I'm in charge here. I know it's called the fire for fire segment, but we must also try to hear ourselves. Yes, that yeah. So, yeah, I understand, uh, but when he makes when he no, makes general as I you need to be careful him. with making assumptions. Okay, let's, let's let him land, and then you also um, see well, you you don't just make assumptions. You don't make blanket statements. If you're going to say that somebody did something, you have got to be specific and connect it with how it doesn't solve the problem. And all the facts I've given to you, I have proven that religion in this country is a boost to the GDP of Nigeria. Mr. Ifama Beru, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Think, Mr. Ifama Beru has the floor. Uh -huh. Well, I think that um, I'm in a sorry state, really. I'm in a sorry state because here we are discussing religion. A religion, these religions, in actual fact, were used to further the enslavement of our people. Islam was used as the instrument of the Arab enslavers to enslave our people for over 300 years. Christianity was used to enslave our people for over 500 years. And yet we are trying to defend these religions. I think it is, it is something that is so unimaginable. You know, because we at this material point in time, we should be critical about these religions. You see, we are not saying that these religions, I mean, these churches, these monks, I mean, I'm not saying they should be, you know, ignored. But let us have a critical mind.
It is very, very important because nearly all of these religions were brought and imposed on our people by these enslavers. And they were meant to, use, to be used as, you know, as a framework you know, to control their minds. And which is what religion is all about today. And I'm saying this not because um, uh, you know, I, I have to go to school to learn this. I'm saying this because I understand what religion is all about, the intents and purposes of religion as, a, and as an instrument of mind control. And you see, for us, we have come down to that conclusion that if there's any definition we can give to religion, it is the fact that it causes no other thing but psychological damage and physical bondage. But if we take religion out, there'll be a vacuum. How do we can fill I, that I, vacuum? I, I, because, I, people, because, because people need, because as it is now, religion has become that interface between humanity yes, that's and that's correct. But you will see, you will, you will see so that. So how do we Europe, fill that vacuum? Thank you very much. I'm an historian. Europe was under the same state we are in now, during the 15th century and the 16th century. They were the most religious. Are you get what I'm saying now? But around the 14th, around the 16th century, there was what we call the age of enlightenment. You understand what I'm saying? People began to reason. People began to question authority. But we haven't had our own age of enlightenment, and that is why we are in this perfect mess. But you see, I'm hopeful, because here we have the masses of our people questioning these religious leaders. Something like this couldn't have happened about two decades ago. Many were approaching our own era of age of enlightenment. And we are approaching our own age of enlightenment because there's, the, there's what we call the age of information. And no pastor and no imam can stop age of information. Our the political age leaders have also used religion to get at us. We see them coming to churches and to mosques through the pastors to also ask for votes. So Maybe. religion again, religion again has in some, if you look at it, it appears to be causing more problems because you see bad leaders come to the pupils because they are in the pupils, in our church, in our mosque. The people, the congregation believe them and cast their vote for them. And when they get there, they turn the other way. Let me take it from the fact that he said he's an historian. And you recall... No, before you wait, go there, I would like I'll, you to yes, react because to Yes, because I'll connect it to what you just said. Go ahead. Anybody who is an historian in this country or who was in class during sessions of government or history, you'll understand that there's a difference between religion and government. The people who were enslaved were the government mechanisms of those enslavers. The religious people who brought religion brought education with them. What would we have done with the likes of CMS Grammar School? What we, would we have done without the first story building built by these missionaries? What would we have done with all the schools built across the southwest and the north that were schools built by religious societies? I repeat, don't forget, the reason we speak one language today, because all the people who sit in this room, I see Igbo, I see Aousa, I see Yoruba, we didn't even understand ourselves before now. But religion brought its common language for us. And don't forget, then let me, you had your time to speak. You had your time to speak. So, so, let me, so let me connect it to your question. In the religious circle, just as in the political space, when you have the freedom of expression and freedom of association, anybody has the right to associate with any religion. And when they associate with any religion, on the premise that I am not God, who am I to judge somebody and to not permit him to speak in a faith that he associates with? Unfortunately, some people have abused religion just as so many people have been doing over the years. However, it doesn't take away the fact that religion is solving a lot of problems that the state is failing to solve. I've given you references to talk about people, known and unknown in this society, who will say if churches or mosques or any other form of religion is cancelled in this country today, they will barely survive one year. All right, let, let, can I say something, please? Go ahead, say something, um, please. Because we are alive, I think it is important for us to not miseducate our people. I think it is so unfortunate for a brother to come up here and tell us that we are now related with one another before the arrival of the Europeans. I think that is, no. You see, I didn't say we were no, not related. Please, please, My please. emphasis Excuse was that me. we did not speak Excuse one language. Me. Okay, okay, okay. The yeah, emphasis, listen, me. listen. I can't stand here. 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 Hold on, guys. 
guys, hold on. What was your hold on? What was your emphasis? I can't stand here and be misinterpreted. Okay, please. What, what I said okay. was that we did not speak the same language. Yeah, but then oh, yeah, that, I, I was going to the same point. We oh. did not speak the same language. That's in different words, from please, misinterpreting ourselves. In other words, in other words ahead, that means we're not communicating with one another, isn't it? But the figure oh, part, we did not understand exactly. one another. But you know, linguists have been able to tell us that African people were communicating with one another for several centuries before the arrival of the Europeans, before the arrival of the Arabs. Please let us don't place this high glory on colonial languages. Without English, without French, our people will still be communicating with one another. Let us don't make a fun of our people. And also, let me say, because you know, he said something earlier. He was saying, without religion, without Christianity, we wouldn't have had you know, um, Western religion. I mean, Western education, CMS, and all of that. But the single fact still remains that Western education, at its you know earliest period wasn't meant to facilitate any development for African people. And you can read what I would need to educate yourself about this. How you repeat it on yes, the exactly. Africa. Yes, exactly. Now, the point about Western education, and that's why we call it the theory house. What the colonialists wanted our people to learn was how to read, how to write, and how to solve arithmetic and what have you. It was not meant to facilitate any development. And as a matter of fact, those that were educated, the, Western, the earliest African Western educated element, were people that you can call the deluded hubris. Because they have that illusion that they were living in a different society, whereas they, are living, they were living in an African society. As a matter of fact, which is still the problem of Western education, Western education gives us a false impression as to, what, as to who we are. And that's why you have several graduates down on the street without no job. Because this education we are receiving do not connect with our social realities and conditions, like I said earlier on. <laughs> now, let me get to this point. Let me get to this point. The point remains that when you look at what religion is today, really, you will see that many of us, we are throwing that understanding. We are, throwing, we are working that part of understanding because we are seeing that whether we like it or not, whether we like it or not, we, as a people, we are losing things that has to do with our own cultural heritage. And that is why the most antagonistic set of people against things that has to do with our own traditional institutions, our own traditional systems, are the religious folks. You know, whether you like it or not, the Christian folks, the Muslim folks, they are never happy whenever you have a traditional festival going on. But before, before the advent of religion now, or before religion came into, um, let's say, Nigeria, that spirituality that you say we had, yes. they did solve our problems. It did. How? You know, because the kind of spirituality we had, and I could take you back to ancient Kemet. That's the name we call Egypt. Egypt. Um, you see, spirituality then was practiced in a sort of, in a, in a way that it had nexus to commonality. You know what commonality means? That is, we're living in togetherness. And that is why you didn't have a priest coming that, well, I want you all to do this. I want you all to pay some certain amount of money. No, you dare not. Come to Yoruba land, for instance. We had several gods and goddesses. Even if you can't find goddesses in the Christian and the, you know, but that's just a discussion for some other time. But the single fact remains that our own traditional, our own spirituality had a place for women. You understand what I'm saying? And which is something we have to acknowledge. Gender equality. Now, exactly. So you could have your Ogun, you could have your Shongo, you could have your Oya at your backyard. And you see, right within that same neighborhood, you have another man that will have a shoe, that will have um, a batala, that will have, and there won't be any form of conflict. So I'm saying today, there won't be any, come up, any form of conflict, because that's what we found. Religious tolerance was part and parcel of our people. But you see, Christianity and Islam brought what? Religious intolerance. Yes. Because you must understand that these Abrahamic religions, they came up with the idea, I pointed it out earlier on, made chauvinistic idea that we want to condemn, we want to, we want to enslave, we want to rule, we want to take over. And you see, these religions in actual fact should be, I'm mean, sorry to say, but you know, those that are holding these religions, that are so fanatic about these religions, should be ashamed. Because in actual fact, these religions were plagiarized from Egypt. You understand what I'm saying now? Judaism is the earliest religion. After Judaism, we had Christianity, and after Christianity, we had Islam. Judaism copied from ancient Kemet. Now, Christianity copied from Judaism. Now, Islam copied from Christianity. So it is such you know, an you apparatus. Know, you know, let, 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 let me, no, 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 no. He's had, he's had a fairly good chance. Wait, wait, he's had a fairly good chance to speak. Wait, wait, 
Uh, is that a fairly good chance to speak? On. So let me take you one after the other. Hold on, hold on. I said he said something. Yeah. He said something. He talked about intolerance. Intolerance. Yeah. You know when in my opening I said religion is a sensitive issue. Yeah. When we are debating, discussing, yeah. people get agitated, emotional when you're talking about religion. Yeah. That is a problem. Exactly. Now, whether that is a problem. Is it or a not? problem? Now, now it, it, again, it again, can I can I address? Right. Let me address the no, issues I, I will, he has raised. Answer, then I will answer, answer your question. It is part of the issues he now, raised. He, 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 raised, he raised that. He raised that. He talked about intolerance. And that is what I Again, caused. it comes back to my fallacy of assumption that he has made earlier. That's he is making right. assumptions. And those assumptions cannot be the basis for judging this debate. No. Let me remind you, or let me give you a factual example that you can verify. All right. For example, I know of a church that just started next to a mosque. <laughs> and when the church was being built, it was the mosque that provided the water for the church. Till date, they live together. Mm -hmm. When the church needs to hide some of its properties because of burglary, it takes them into the mosque. You can't get and we're talking about religious intolerance. You can't get in every, in nearly country. every family in the southwestern part of Nigeria, there is a Muslim, there is a Christian. How do we live together in our various families? Sorry, sorry. When you're talking about religious intolerance, that happens in some societies in parts of the country, but it is not the same every in society. every way. Every it's not the same in every part Come of Nigeria. Sorry, Listen, please. in my family today, I still have Muslims. And they are my friends. That's, I have Muslims who are my friends. That's not that is not intolerance. Please, please, See, please. you can't assume that because some people are intolerant, then the entire folks who believe in these religions are intolerant. Let me ask him a question. No, 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 no. You Can had I your time to talk. You, you had your time Can to talk. So you give me the moment to talk. It's a question. Can I ask you a question? No, because I'm still talking. <laughs> All right, quickly, quickly, so, make your point. Make your point and you, you answer his question. You didn't, you didn't hasten him up when he was speaking. Make your point, so make then, your point, so make your point. I have <laughs> proven to you that in so many parts of this country, we are not intolerant. Let me also remind you, I served in Sokoto State some years back, and I remember that there was a challenge one day. Guess what? The person who helped me to escape was a Muslim. And I slept in his office overnight, and he drove me to the airport, That's where I got my, 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 my lady then, who is now my wife today, got new. her out of that crisis. Now, during the election of that Superman. year, during the election of that year, my wife would have been stabbed to death. Why? She made a mistake. Wow. She announced a result as a volunteer for INEC, and the results she announced, because she had issues with her eyes, she almost wrote it for another party. Wow. If she had the intention of forging, why would she announce the results and then try to put it for another party? And some people try to attack her. But guess who got her out of that place? A Muslim. That's not who new. knows that she's a Christian. That's not new. So listen, Let me ask it is question. absolutely wrong Let me to conclude and to try to convince the people yeah. that it was religion that brought intolerance right. into the country. Can he I, has made his point. Yeah, Your question, sir. Now, you see, I'm, I'm going to ask you this question, but before I do, I would like to make a Your comment. Your question, William. Yes, to I would, I would just like next. to make a comment. One thing I find very, very funny is that the religious people can hold, just like you said. Again, another they can, assumption. No, no, please. Religious people, they, that's yes, a blanket please, statement. Please. Because they can be, um, the they beautiful can, audience. Be, and that doesn't tell us, questions. and that doesn't please, tell us how religion please. does not solve okay, problems. Then, okay, then, your question, just, your, yes, question, your question, just your question. Because we, your I question. Mean, how, how they could be intolerant, that, that's question. the point I was trying to make. You know, have you ever heard of the Council of Nasir? The Council of Nasir in 325 BC. Now, if you haven't, I will tell you, it was in this council, it was in this conference, that the making of Christianity that we understand it of today was actually cooked up, was made up, and you could goggle it up. That's your own assumption. Now, That's thing, not what my Bible no, tells I'm, me. I'm, I'm, if you I'm don't believe, this. if you don't believe in religion, no, no, no. sorry, sorry. Let me let me make this please, point. All right, please, all right, please. All right, both of you. Both no, of you, quickly, both of you. quickly. Let me at make this point. point. At this point, we'll take a quick break, and when we return, our beautiful audience here will be allowed to ask their own questions. You're still watching the big issue. Welcome back. You're still watching the big issue. Of course, and we're debating the topic, is religion truly a solution to society's problem? 
Well, it's question time, and the members of the audience are itching to ask their questions. Show me, do. You said religion and power are separate things. They are not. That is not a factual statement. That's your opinion. Because it's not my opinion, it's a fact. The church, Roman Catholic Church, is called Roman exactly. Catholic Church because it is tied to the government of Rome. Exactly. Islam is tied to the government in the Middle East. The church, Anglican Church, is tied to the government of England. Education. And that is why it is called the Anglican Church, the English that's Church. So in the Constitution of the that Federal Republic of statement. Nigeria? Now, until recently... So? Now, you answer my question. Is that so in the I'll Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Let me list the atrocities of religion. Answer Let me list my own the atrocities question. of religion. Hello, okay, I'm asking then, you a question. Then, hold on. You have your time to react to his question. <laughs> Quickly, please. In the Middle East, the Shiites and the Sunnis, both Muslim sects, they fight each other. In Ireland, the Catholics and the Protestants, both Christian sects, fight each other. In Netherlands, we have probably less than 30 churches. And Netherlands is moving forward. China is an a-religious society. They don't have any religion. They are moving forward. Exactly. England, America used to be very religious. Now they've dropped their religiosity and they are moving forward. Now, Nigeria is probably the most religious nation in the world with Muslims, Christians, intimate population, yet we are backward. Boko Haram war is a religious war. Jihad, Islamic Jihad is a religious war. Your question. Wait, I'm going there. Quickly, let's Christianity, get there. being peddled by the West, came to Africa, colonized Africa, in connivance with government changed our religious system, changed our cultural system, enslaved us, and yet you are here telling us that religious has, religion so has solved our problems. Now, in the face of all this fact, how has religion solved our problems? Good. All right, then, quickly, please, um, respond to his question. You wasted too much time in asking a question that my learned colleagues will respond to by simply saying, res ipsa locutor, the facts speak for themselves. In the first place, the government failed us in the area of education. Religious bodies, whether mosques or churches, began to provide solid education. It is only in the privately owned universities in Nigeria that you know when your child gets into a school and knows when he's going to graduate, not in any government institution. That's one answer for you. My question is not directed at anybody. I actually have a comment to actually balance both your arguments. Okay, make it brief. Both of you have points that are very, very valuable. But this is what I want you to understand, sir. Before English education came, or religious education as you called it, I know I'm an Igbo girl, okay? But I grew up in this city called Lagos, and I know that Shalanga is for toilet. Now, it is because I understand Yoruba. It's not a matter of English. Exactly. It was when the Englishmen came, they told me that it's called toilet. There was a word for it even in Igbo language. Exactly. Now, what I want you to understand is this. We had a government. We had a judicial system. We had the executive. We had the legislatures. We just had different names for them in our different tribal languages. The Englishmen came and imposed a certain knowledge that they felt was okay, that would make them understand us better or in a way suppress us for their own gains. Now I want you to get this point. I want you to understand this. I, uh, hold on. Yeah, sorry, hold on. Sorry, now quick, coming to comment. hold on. Sir, hold say, on. Sir, sorry, hold let's on. Let's now let's coming let's to let's you, you sir. Coming to you sir. Miracles happen. Miracles happen because people believe in Jesus and because actually people believe in God. Now the truth is Islam is because a man said he's called Prophet Muhammad. He had an experience with God. I want to advise everybody in this room. Religion is not what somebody told you. Christianity is not what your pastor preaches. You are the church. Your mind is the church. God dwells in you. It is the relationship we have with God. Is that spirituality that you will experience. It is not what the church tells you. It's not what the imams tell you. Because the truth is the church and the mosque have helped people to say, come to church all the time, give all the time. But they have failed to make people grow in their own personal relationship with God. Even the Bible tells you that you should spend one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus. Hallelujah. It's not that. <laughs> All right, then. Oh, hold on, guys. Hold on. Easy, easy, easy. All right, Mr. Fola Daniels. Now, briefly. Again, I, just as I said earlier, and I recall vividly that I never said 
we did not have all these things before religion and the foreign government came. My emphasis, again, was the fact that we did not speak the same language. And the truth, the verifiable, undeniable truth is, the, is that until they came, we did not speak the same language. Again, back to the first person who asked me a question. You recall that every nation that developed did not develop because they dropped religion. They developed because a responsible government came into power. Thank you. They developed because the people who are visionary. A nation like Singapore moved from being a third world nation to becoming a first world nation, not because it dropped religion, but because the people that it voted for, the leaders of that nation did the needful. So the progress of a nation has nothing so do with to do religion. with, sorry, sorry, listen to this. The progress of the listen nation this. is not the responsibility of that religion. However, in Nigeria, what happened, as we all know, is that when the government began to fail us, religion stepped in and religion began to solve the problems that the government was supposed to solve. All right, then, Mr. Ifama Beru, quickly. Yeah, and let me quickly say that because we are live and we need to educate the mass of our people, what the brother said earlier on was that, um, I mean, we were not speaking one language. Of course, we were not speaking one, one language, but our people were wise enough that they had to communicate with one another. And that's why we have long words. Traders were migrating, people were migrating with one another and they were communicating. So the fact that we didn't have one language, that in itself, did, I mean, does not mean that we were not communicating with one another. As a matter of fact, the traders, they could speak several languages. Now to address the point the sister raised, the sister raised a very valuable point. And I think the sister actually made, um, I mean, made, present my case in a better way by saying that, you no, know, today the pastors, the imams, they, you know, it appears that they've done monopolized knowledge. And as such, she was saying that people do not need to, they, they, they don't need the pastors, they don't need the imams. And that's the point. That was what spirituality was about before the arrival of religion. <laughs> you know, she, she, had, she, had, she had, you know, she had, I'll, she, I'll respond she, to that. She, she made my point. She made my point. That was what? Hold on, please. Let's she made my point. That was what? Spirituality. That's spirituality. Spirituality is about self. Spirituality is about self-discovery. You don't need a pastor. You don't need an imam. Let me, let me, let me respond right, to right. that. At this point, we need let another member of the audience to ask his question. No, just sit down, sir. Thank you. My name is Olad Meji Samuel. My question goes to Ifa Mabero. Oh, please, sir. Uh, I, I want to narrow everything down to Nigeria situation. That is what brought out this topic. This and according to Kamax, that say religion is the opium of masses. I'm a realist, meaning that I see from the grassroots what really happened. What the negativities of this government affected me. It could affect me more than you, maybe because you are on the top. No, Do you not. understand? No. I'm just as poor as you. Well, I wouldn't know. Uh, but question. I want you to prove to me, sir, that Kamak's philosophical saying is wrong in a situation whereby a leader which you voted to represent you failed you and not one or twice, repeatedly or continuously. And you are telling me because... That's the question, right? But I want to give you some instances. In my area, do you know church and mocks? They provide boreholes because the water of state, the state water, water corporation failed us. So are they not doing something? Thank you. All right, then. Thank you very much. That's it. I think your question will, or your statement will make Mr. Fola Daniels no, happy. It was meant for me. And it's meant for you. Yeah. My brother made a very valuable point. And if my brother could remember vividly before I you know, get started to this point, I may mention of the fact that our people are so much into religion today because the state had failed our people. The government over the years, over the decades, had done failed our people. And that's why our, when our people go to the churches, when our people go to the mosques, they feel that, you know, this is where I belong. You know, this is where, this is the last resort. This is where I could connect with my soul. But the irony had always been that eventually they really do not, you know, connect eventually with the churches and the monks. And I, and I understand the point you've made. I understand the point you've made. And you see, religion had not failed our people yet. Or let me say Christianity is here to fail our people because um, no one knows when Jesus Christ he is going to arrive. He has spoken for me, finally. And perhaps. He has finally spoken perhaps, for me. And perhaps. 
you know, no one knows when Jesus Christ is going to arrive because he's not going to arrive, you know, in actual fact. So, so let me say, let me say this. All right, all right. Let me say this. Let me at this point. Please, hold please. Hold on. Let me say something at this hold point. Hold on, please. Just a, just a word, hold please. on. Hold on. Hold on. Sit down, please. Sit. You don't have the mic, so you can't, we can't hear Quick. you. Sorry. You, Sorry. We can't hear you. You Sorry. don't have a microphone. Sorry. We can't hear you. Even if Sorry. we shout, we can't hear you. You don't have please, a microphone. Please, please. I'm, I'm, I'm hold on, hold on. He's Are you getting more time. He's 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 Listen up, listen up. The, the churches, the monks, of course they are providing all of these things, but are, how many of them are in If they are providing, providing it, means we are solving things. problems, you know, which is the crux of this debate. And the point is that they are providing those things out of the tight the people are paying. You understand what I'm saying? If the people aren't paying, they wouldn't That's none of your anything. business. All right, then. Quickly. Now, quickly. We have a last question. The first thing we must remember is that religion is beyond Christianity and Muslims. Because we have narrowed this debate, let's not be myopic. There are people who say they are Ifa worshippers. There are people who say they are Shongo worshippers. There are people who say they worship whatever. So religion in the first place is not just Christians and Muslims. That's the first point we must establish. So what we had, even before Muslims and Christians came to play, was still a religion. The people simply transited. Again, religion is solving the problems of the people because the government is failing the people. I know of a particular mission in Nigeria today that actually provided over 20,000 school bags to pupils who were returning to school. And that's the responsibility of the government. Yes. I know of a particular mission who had a convention and for the entire week fed over a million people. I know, just like my brother there said, in a particular community, the government failed to provide, the government failed to provide water and the church has stepped in. We mentioned this thing. I also said to you earlier that in Nigeria, I also said to you in Nigeria that there is no government institution that you will get into and know when you're going to graduate. You only know when you get in, you don't know when you graduate. But religious institution, you know the date of your graduation many, and it doesn't fail. How many of the worshippers in those churches can afford to That's not the question. Words? The question no, is, does please, it solve a problem? Please, please. And it's solving a problem. Well, we'll go on this short break, and when we come back, we'll be heading home. You're still watching The Big Issue. Indeed, we've had an interesting debate here today. Is religion truly the solution to society's problem? Ifa Maberu and Fola Daniels. Now, if I your last take on this topic from your own standpoint. Well, I, I would just like to say that um, when we understand religion, we should understand religion within the context that um, religion is a cultural understanding of the spiritual realm. And if religion is the cultural understanding of the spiritual realm, that means you must practice your religion in, to, in tune with your own cultural um, heritage and what have you. If you do not, you become the prisoner, the slave of other people, and which is the reality of today. So what I'm saying in essence is that religion as an organized system mm. are done, overstayed, it's welcome on this continent because we really do not decide this religion in the actual fact. Christianity belongs to the Europeans, the white people, and that's why you have the white Jesus. Yeah. Um, Islam belongs to the Arabs, and that's why you have a Muhammad who has no connection whatsoever with us as a people. So what I'm saying in conclusion is that these two religions have done overcome their stay, and it is our time we as a people wrap them up and throw them into the trash can of Islam. All right, Ifa Maberu. Follow Daniels, your last take. Thank you very much. Let's remember that... Let's listen to Mr. Fola Daniels, please. Thank you very much. Let's remember that the debate, the debate was, has religion solved our problems? My colleague has spoken so intelligently, but has not been able to dispute the fact that religion has been solving problems. So I say, as somebody who has my faith, that religion, we need to be careful. That's the truth. That's what I tell people. However, religion is solving problems in Nigeria. <laughs> and it is still doing so. 
And I seize this opportunity to remind you that religion actually is broader than just being a Muslim and being a Christian. There are several other people worshipping whatever it is that they believed in. Let us use whatever we believe in to solve the problems of other people. Because for me and for my faith, Quickly. the instruction is you must love your neighbor as yourself. And when you love your neighbor as yourself, you help them to meet their needs. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Pola Daniels and Mr. Ifa Maberu. At this point, I would like both of you to bury the hatchet on this stage. So I'd like you to please shake hands. <laughs> A round of applause for them. Well, that's the show today. I thank you very much for watching The Big Issue. You can connect with me on Twitter at Femi Akonde TVC. You can also follow me on Facebook at Femi Akonde. You can also follow us at TVC News NG and at TVC Connect. Thank you very much for watching The Big